The floor is all mine. Thank you, oh. Ricarda, and also thank you, Aaron, and also already thank you, Christian, for joining me here today. And um, also thank you to all of the participants already, because from uh, the few introductions I have heard already, um, I think I will skip one or two of my first slides is always, you know, we don't know who is coming, who is in the room, but I have the impression that you are um, experts already. So I try to keep my uh, talking time on the um, on the input part a little bit shorter and uh, would like to focus on the exchange later on. I was um, already introducing myself with uh, the two participants uh, that we were in the breakout room. Um, and I will repeat that a little bit for, for everybody here. So um, I'm Doris Knoblauch from Ecologic Institute in Berlin. Uh, Ricarda already said that I'm working on the topic plastics in the environment, which is a broad topic. And I'm also addressing it from a broad um, um, angle but with a certain focus. And I'm a political scientist by training. So my focus is on um, policies and policy science interface. Uh, Christian and I were at the um, UN negotiations as were a few of the participants, spotted you already, and um, happy to exchange on that. So um, I will start straight away with uh, the title of the webinar from packaging to microplastics, unwrapping EU and international plastics policy. And um, we have heard um, from some participants who are in the room, they are interested in uh, human behavior or health aspects. We have someone who is dealing with um, recycling in his professional career. So I'm happy um, and looking forward to the exchange later on. And I will now start with a broader picture. We dig deeper and deeper and Christian will take over and then dig even more deep into the topic. So I will um, start very briefly. Slide is not moving now. So I don't have to tell you that plastics in the environment is not a challenge any longer. It is a crisis. There is a lot out there. Most of it is land-based and only very few of it is um, found of the marine surface. Uh, marine litter is found at the surface. So I will skip that very briefly because you were all experts on that. I will also go briefly um, over this slide. Where does the plastic waste come from? Um, I have to um, emphasize that it's all estimates, but I think it's all it's good to um, to remind ourselves that um, if we look at the um, at the circles that you see here, um, the amount of plastic waste produced, you can see that in yellow, the amount of plastic waste, and the proportion of poor waste management is in red. So um, I hope you cannot hear my phone that is ringing in the background. Um, so we see that. Um, uh, in the United States or in the EU, um, the circles are quite big and the mismanaged waste is quite small there. While in other countries, mainly the global south, the circles are smaller, but the amount of mismanaged waste is higher. So I just wanted to remind us of um, this fact that the circle, the circles are quite big in the global north. I think what is often a, um, a taboo is to talk on a cap on the plastic production. But in fact, we should talk about a cap on plastic production because the, um, the plastic production um, grew so fast since the 1950s only. You can see in this graph that uh, more than half of all the plastics ever produced have been made since 2000. That's very little time. And um, and the plastic production is growing immensely. So whatever type of recycling, whatever type of waste management we create out there, it's not good enough to cope with the sheer amounts of plastic we are producing. So we need to talk about a cap on, uh, on plastics production. And yes, this <laughs> the industry does not like to hear that. And yes, that is a tricky discussion and no, 
obviously not all of the plastics everywhere should be banned. Um, we have, you know, medical issues whatsoever. So we need to look closely at what should be done, how, when, and where. And I like to point to the waste hierarchy here, which is super important so that we would start with reducing the amount of plastics that we use, reusing it, and then recycling as part of the solution, but it comes later um, and it's not the uh, most important solution because it is not um, all the recycling that we're doing in the world is not enough to, um, to deal with the amounts. Also, because a lot of materials uh, cannot be recycled at all, as um, stands today, the science. So if we now shift uh, the focus to um, to the policies, ah, yeah, that is um, one of my favorite um, pictures, images that I usually start, start my talks with. Um, this is a family, and for a film that was made, they were asked to uh, to bring to their garden from their house, all the products made of plastics. And um, you can see that it is a lot. And um, I can say um, on that picture, on that note, if we're talking about um, cap, uh, a cap on plastic production, um, uh, most of the people immediately say that um, um, the policy should not, you know, limit their liberty, liberty, their freedom of choosing, of consuming, whatever. But um, in Europe, on average, every person on average throws away 11 kilogram clothes per year on average. 11 kilogram clothes. And most of the clothes are made from plastics some polymers so um that just uh, as food for thought 11 kilograms so now we shift to the policy aspect um we have if we look at the um, eu level um we have um the eu plastic strategy that was um, adopted in january 2018 we start from the bottom in this graph and in uh, may um, the Commission made a proposal for a directive on single-use plastics, uh, which then entered into force uh, roughly a year later. Then um, in 2020, um, the European Commission adopted a new circular economy action plan. And um, in 2022, um, the Commission adopted a communication on a policy framework for bio-based, biodegradable, biodegradable and compostable plastics. So um, difficult topic, as I mentioned earlier. And um, now very uh, recently, um, there um, is the adoption of several initiatives on microplastics at stakes. So the reach restriction, and when we talked in the smaller circle and got to know each other earlier, we talked about the glitter. And uh, this was one of the um, things that should be restricted under the new um, um, EU legislations. So there was this proposal for a regulation uh, on preventing pellet losses. And um, this was all very recent so recent that, that if we look at the plastic strategy that was more or less the beginning uh, the circular, circular economy action plan or the new circular economy action plan they are the the borders or the the basis for the policies but the developments um, very recently last week um, uh, were discussed in 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 parliament uh, in the eu and the headlines were Parliament treasures EU hopes to reduce packaging waste, siding with throwaway industry. So there was a, um, a backdrop uh, from the Parliament side. And also, um, I thought that would fit quite well to our topic today, Green Deal, Big Deal. So the headline was Green Deal is dead. MEPs voted against a healthy future for us and our children because they rejected the pesticides reduction. And that the focus is on pesticides, but um, 
they are often um, they often come along with microplastics um, and are also um, in the field of of chemicals where we are um, where plastics are also located. So the um, the latest developments were quite um, unambitious. Let's call it like that. Um, if we look at the international level. Um, we said earlier that uh, Christian and I and some others were taking part in uh, negotiations at the UN, UN level. And if you look at this uh, nice map here, you can see this. Uh, do you see my mouse? Yeah, so you can you can see this uh, red cross here. That does not mean that a treasure is to be found there, but that we are here in the process. So if we started over here with UNEA 5.2, where the member states, the UN member states, not the EU member states, the UN member states adopted um, the resolution uh, 514 to develop an international legally binding instrument on plastic pollution. And so far, that's the official term, a um, instrument. We um, we often talk about a treaty because we hope that it will be a treaty. And um, in order to get to that uh, legally binding instruments, five negotiation rounds are foreseen. So the first one uh, took part in 2022 in uh, Uruguay. Then early this year in May, we were in Paris. And um, 10 days ago, we were in, uh, in Nairobi in Kenya at the third negotiation round. So two more are scheduled, uh, but as uh, progress is um, made very slowly, I don't think that uh, we will stay with the five negotiations round. There will probably be some more um, in order to get to an agreement and happy to uh, shed more light on the negotiations during our discussion. What I want to highlight from the negotiations and these pictures and um, citations are still from um, the INC2 in May this year, but they are still valid. So um, just to give you an impression how these um, negotiations look, the plenary and some of the um, discussions between single um, groups. Um, Inga Anderson said, in Paris, we can't recycle our way out of this mess. And I still think that this is a super nice um, citation that, that quotes it all. Um, and this also highlights why um, recycling alone is not a solution, it's part of the solution. And what a Senegalese delegation said um, here on bracketing and what bracketing is, I will shed light on that uh, later in our discussion. He said, consensus is what kills democracy. And usually these negotiations, they are very formal, but he got standing ovation, spontaneous applause uh, for this. Uh, this is um, very rarely um, observed during negotiations. And this means that um, during the UN negotiations, um, they're, they're member state driven. So all the states have the same rights. So they should come to an agreement uh, based on a consensus, which means on the other hand, that every country has a veto right. And if you're now negotiating with uh, countries that are heavy on um, um, oil exporting or petrochemical industries, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Russia, some others, then um, it's very hard to come to an agreement if they have a veto right. And um, I Doris think may have, I, I, sorry, may I give uh, it to Christian. Just, I don't know how, how much um, uh, longer you have, and I don't want to cut you because super insight uh, for I'm, already. I Thank was you so about much. to terminate. Okay, perfect. <laughs>